knowing God. Knowing God. Actually, today's healing and deliverance service is dedicated to revival. Knowing God. There are many people who know about God. There are many also who know those who know God. But very few people know God. Those who know about God, those who know those who know God, very, very few who know God for themselves. Daniel chapter 11. All right. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. He said, Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And it shall come unto us as the rain as the latter and the former rain unto the end. If we follow on, we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord. Knowing God. When a man or a woman knows God, What are the products, the result or the effect? First, one, the knowledge of God establishes the reign of revival. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Is going forth is prepared as the morning. He will come to us as the rain. Those who know God dwell inside revival. Their lives are saturated and irrigated with the climate of heaven. Those who know about God or know those who know God or just come to church, they exist in dryness and scarcity in the spirit. Number two, the knowledge of God brings strength for exploits. Daniel eleven thirty two, the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. The knowledge of God brings strength for exploits. Exploits are attention commanding results. Unusual feats of faith. People who don't know God never dwell in the realm of exploits. In fact, they are exploited by the devil. But the knowledge of God brings strength for exploit. Number three, the knowledge of God brings power for the supernatural. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, that I may know him and the power. He brings power. For the supernatural. Blind seeing, deaf hearing, barren wombs opening. People that do that I may know him and also know power. To know God is to know power. Fourth. The knowledge of God brings transformation for life and destiny. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. We all behold us in a glass. The glory of the Lord. 
we are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord we are changed the knowledge of God brings transformation for life you can't know him and remain the same in fact the knowledge of God equals the acquisition of the nature of divinity we are transformed into the same image so the knowledge of God establishes the reign of revival brings strength for exploits power for the supernatural transformation for life and destiny and finally the knowledge of God births grace and peace it gives birth to grace and peace Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2 it says grace and peace be multiplied. Verse 3 right verse I say second Peter right chapter 1 second Peter chapter 1 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God The more of God you know, the more in grace you walk. Grace and peace be multiplied. The more of God you know, the more in grace you walk, or the more in grace you become. The bankruptcy of the knowledge of God is what is equal to shortage of grace. Scarcity of grace. Also, the more of God you know, the more at peace you live. Peace. A life peaceful. A life free of crisis. The more of God you know, the more at peace you live. Someone say amen. So knowing God is more than knowing the president. It's more than knowing the governor. It's more than knowing the pastor. It's more than knowing a senator. It's more than knowing London. Is more than knowing the U.S. Knowing God is more than knowing the ambassador. And what is the secret or the keys to knowing God? Number one, desperation and the other way, desire and desperation. You combine them together, it becomes desperate desire. To know. Desperate desire. Then shall we know. If we follow on to know. Desperate desire to know God. That was Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. Then shall we know. If we follow on to know. Number two, intimate fellowship with God. Intimate fellowship with God. The word fellowship is The Greek word koinonia and it is the English word intercourse 
And that is what the Bible means when it said, and Adam knew his wife. Relating with God as man and wife relate with themselves in intimacy. As we saw in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, looking at him, spending time with him, is a secret of knowing God. The easiest way to know a person is to hang around them, hear them talk, understand their mannerisms. Intimate fellowship. With God. And thirdly, scriptural revelation by desperate desire, by intimate fellowship, and by scriptural revelations. Where God begins to show you who He is from Scripture. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 21, the Bible says. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. By the word of the Lord. Out of his word he will show you who he is. Amen. Somebody say aloud, amen. Since I started working with God. And especially stepping into ministry, I have not struggled to know a mortal man. There was one time I struggled to meet a particular man of God. My wife followed me on that journey. The struggle was futile. It was aborted. When it wasn't as if we were failing as it were. God has already helped, was already helping us in ministry. The person through whom we wanted him to co co connect, to link us with the man, played us down. Felt maybe, you know, the man himself. Long story made short. I told the story in that little book. Go in this thy might. I told the story in the introduction. And I felt frustrated. And on my way back, God told me, I think that was will be one of the times that I looked for man. Not necessarily because I wanted money from him. He carried grace. And I wanted to connect. And God told me, what you are looking for is not with a man. It is with me. He said, link up with me. And I can link you up with any man on earth, if necessary. What you are looking for is not with a man. It changed my mentality. I came home with my wife with the more desperation to look for God. You know what happened? I looked for God and I found what I was looking for. One day I was in my office at Dunamis Church in Area 1. And Somebody came to my office there and said, so and so person is looking for you. Who is that? The same person that I wanted to see. That they say I couldn't see. is looking for me. For what? He's inviting you for a program in his country. He's trying to find out whether you have the chance to come. I spoke to the man on the phone. He's too delighted. He wants to meet me. He has heard so much about me. He wants me. Long story made short, I flew all the way to that country. I was to preach for a day or two. It exceeded. They will not allow. And I will never forget that lesson forever. What you are looking for is with me, not with man. I can pass through man, but don't look at the man. Somebody say amen. So let's struggle to know God. I've never struggled to know a political or governmental leader for no reason under heaven will never struggle till I draw my last.
when the time is up. Never. Somebody say amen. And today, like I told you, God's focus for this service today was revival. And I believe somebody's spiritual life shifted to another level and you will testify. Lift up your right hand. I gave an altar call before, but I'm aware that there are those who have not come out today to surrender their lives to Jesus. You are in that category, therefore, carry your Bibles and your bags. Step right to the front here and say, Pastor, I heard the preaching. And I'm going to pray one prayer for everyone here today before you leave here. So quickly, pick your Bibles and your bags. You have not come out today at all to either give your life to Christ uh, with the cultists or those who came out at first, you want to give your life to Christ. God bless you, man. Pick your Bibles and your bags and come forward.